Thank you, Mr. President. I am most pleased to be here today to manage consideration of this appropriations bill package. This includes the fiscal year 2019 bills for the Subcommittee on Interior, Environment and Related Agencies, Financial Services and General Government, Agriculture, Rural Development, Food and Drug Administration and Related Agencies, as well as Transportation, Housing, and Urban Development and Related Agencies. To distill it down, this, this evening we are taking up Interior, Financial Services, Ag, and THUD, or Transportation, Housing, and Development. So the opportunity to uh, move forward with a package of uh, appropriations bills, all of which have moved through our committee with strong support, is a good place to be. I have long believed that a return to regular order where we, where we vote these appropriations bills out of committee with bipartisan support and then bring them, like we are doing this evening, to the floor. This, this is important for our process. I think all members of the Senate should have an opportunity to debate appropriations bills and offer amendments. We haven't had this opportunity for some years prior to this. The occupant of the chair, a member of the Appropriations Committee, knows that uh, we have been without process when it comes to our appropriations bills. It is now that time for us to not only return to process, return to regular order, but allow other members of this body who do not sit on the Appropriations Committee, allow them the opportunity to weigh in on these priorities. So I am particularly pleased as Chairman of the Interior Appropriations Subcommittee to be on the floor today. This is actually the first time that the Interior Bill has been before the full Senate since FY 2010. FY 2010 was the last time we saw an interior bill on the floor. So this is kind of a significant day for us. If it wasn't such a, a dignified setting, I'd say that deserves a, a round of applause. But we don't want to get ahead of ourselves here. It's an important example of the commitment that both sides have made to really create an environment where we can work through the tough issues on a bipartisan basis. And that was exactly what we saw within the, the full committee, working through the subcommittee, working through the full committee, and now being able to bring these measures to the floor. I will, I will defer to the chairman of the relevant subcommittees to discuss the specifics of each of their bills as we move through consideration of this appropriations package. But I wanted to take uh, a little bit of time this evening to share some information about the interior appropriations uh, bill for my colleagues. I also want to, to thank and acknowledge the good work of my ranking member on the uh, committee, Senator Udall. He's been a good partner to work with. Uh, both of us have recognized that this is not everything that we would have, uh, we would have wanted it to be, but it was a good, collaborative, uh, well-worked process. Within Interior, um, we've got a, a very broad scope of responsibilities. We include funding, or we have the oversight for all of the major federal land management agencies. So we have the National Park Service. We have the Bureau of Land Management, the Fish and Wildlife Service, the Forest Service, and we have the Environmental Protection Agency, all very significant accounts. We also have a side in Interior that, that many of my colleagues forget actually rests within Interior. And this is uh, the oversight for our uh, budgets for our, our Native peoples, our American Indians, Alaska Natives. We provide funding in this measure for essential Indian health, education, and resource management programs through the Bureau of Indian Affairs and the Indian Health Service, and funding for cultural institutions, again, an area that people don't necessarily think of interior and our role here, but we have oversight of the budgets for the Smithsonian Institution, institution the National Gallery of Art, the National Endowments for the Arts and Humanities. So it's a pretty broad spectrum here. 
The Interior Appropriations Bill provides $35.85 billion for fiscal year 2019. This is $600 million more than last year. And I want to thank uh, Chairman Shelby and Vice Chairman Leahy. The increased allocation that we saw for the Interior Bill was, was really important as we assembled this bipartisan bill. This additional funding allowed us to provide program increases that were necessary. In fact, they were absolutely necessary. Um, fire suppression accounts. We, we know that we are in the midst of fire season. It is bad and, and most likely getting worse. So we have been able to provide an additional $500 million for fire suppression. We also provide uh, an additional $109 million for contract support costs in Indian Country. These are obligated expenses from the federal government to, to those who provide for, for those services in Indian Country. We also provide for $115 million for staffing costs that are associated with new health care facilities that are operated by IHS or by tribes, again, under compact agreements. So some would look and say, well, that's a, that's a significant bump, but I would, I would direct colleagues' attention to how we allocated that, again, in accounts where we are obligated uh, either by compact or in the, in the instance of, of fire suppression um, funding, recognizing that we are dealing with, uh, with just the inherent unpredictability and the dangers of fire. The fiscal year 2019 Interior Bill adopts a similar approach to the enacted FY18 Interior Bill. We rejected what we felt were uh, unwarranted decreases that had been proposed in the budget, and we really make investments. We make investments in the highest priorities, particularly infrastructure improvements and investments for our land management agencies, um, also within Indian Country. And, and infrastructure investments in wastewater and, and drinking water improvements. Uh, we have just recently celebrated the 100th anniversary of our National Park Service. Last year, we provided a significant increase for our National Parks uh, construction program. It was actually the, the largest percentage increase ever, but we build on that in this measure recognizing the significant work, the significant maintenance and backlog that our National Park System, our National Park Service faces. Uh, we have an obligation, and so addressing it is, has been a priority in this bill. In the two main agencies that deliver services for the Indian community, and this is the Bureau of Indian Affairs and Indian Health Service, we restored proposed cuts in, in critical program funding we increased funding for the IHS facilities program for construction, maintenance, and sanitation facilities improvement. We provide substantial funding for the BIA to help with the construction of Indian schools, irrigation systems, and public safety facilities. And for both accounts, we provide the fully estimated level of contract support costs, and we maintain an indefinite appropriation account structure so that if, if, the, if the costs uh, are higher than estimated, we're not in a situation where we're robbing Peter to pay Paul, taking from one account within IHS to, to, to fund the other. So we, we're addressing that, uh, that bad practice that we have seen previously. Uh, also, within Indian Health Service, we provide uh, additional resources for grants to tribes for combating the opioid crisis. We know full well that we're facing a, a crisis throughout the country, but in so many of our, uh, so many of our native communities on our reservations, the situation is, is particularly dire. We've had a lot of conversation on this floor about wild, uh, wild land fire management and how we how we end the practice of what we call wildfire borrowing, which is effectively uh, waiting to see how much fire suppression costs were going to, to, to impact us 
and if it was a particularly bad year, you would take funding from other accounts within Forest Service, whether it was, uh, whether it was um, prescriptive uh, management programs or whether it was recreational permits. We, we know that we needed to end this practice of fire borrowing, and we have worked to do that uh, previously here. Within our appropriations bill on the wildfire management programs, we provided a total of $4.35 billion for the Department of Interior and the Forest Service. We fully fund the 10-year average for firefighting costs, and we provide $900 million in additional suppression funds above the 10-year average based on the recent catastrophic seasons and our latest forecasting models. So you hope to get that number right, but this, this new path that we are on for how we deal with wildfire suppression costs is an important one. Big priority in this body uh, for conservation and making sure that we're doing right by uh, our, our lands. And we have uh, included $425 million for the Land and Water Conservation Fund. This is equal to the enacted level. Um, within, that, within that account, uh, we, we are generous to the stateside program. Um, we have, in my view, tended towards greater acquisition on the federal side over the years. I think that that is a direction that was not what LWCF was intended to do. So we have been working to, to make sure that we don't have the inequity, the disparity between state side and, and federal side. We also provide additional funding for recreational access and the American Battlefield Program. Um, I think we took a very common sense approach to the EPA's budget. We focused resources on programs that do very specific and concrete things to, to help with that, that mission set, if you will, of the EPA, basically improve the quality of the environment for the public, clean air, clean water. The bill does provide additional funding to states who have delegated uh, responsibility for environmental programs through, through state-specific grants. It provides an increase above last year's level for the clean water and drinking water state revolving funds. These are the SRF funds. They, they really help to facilitate the critical water infrastructure in communities across the country. And I think there's, there's great recognition that this is an area where we can always be doing more. The WIFIA program, which leverages federal funds for water infrastructure projects, receives $63 million. So when you take the WIFIA funds, you combine this with the SRFs, the bill really does give the EPA, I think, a, a, a very strong suite of tools to improve the quality of life for people around the country. Uh, we provide for additional funding for PILT funding. Um, 500 million is the fully estimated amount needed for this program in 2019. We maintain the subcommittee's commitment to help local communities improve county roads, maintain public safety, and provide funding for schools using funding from the PILT program. And then as I mentioned at the beginning of my comments, when we think about all of the things that are under the uh, purview of interior appropriations, we also did right by our Smithsonian's, uh, by um, ensuring that, that our arts are appropriately uh, funded as well. Now, I will, I will stand before you and, and tell you that there is there's a lot of things that I wished we could have included in this measure, um, but we have stood down, if you will, as, as appropriators working with my, with my colleague and, and friend, the ranking member here. We do not include new policy provisions that were not in the FY18 enacted bill. We just didn't do it. And members know that because they came to us asking if we could include things. But, but we said it's important to our process going forward. So working with Chairman Shelby and Vice Chairman Leahy and, and again, my ranking member, Senator Udall, we assembled a package that advanced unanimously out of the committee. I think that is also historic, to have an interior appropriations bill move unanimously through the full committee 
is, is pretty significant. So I would, I would suggest to you all that this package that we have assembled warrants the support of the full Senate. I want to uh, express my, my appreciation again for the, the good working relation that, relationship that I have with Senator Udall. He's got a great team. Um, Rachel Ryan and Melissa have been great. We've got fabulous folks on my side with Leaf and, and Nana and Emmy and, and Chris. Um, they work hard. They work very hard. But I think they have done a good job in helping shape this bill so that it reflects priorities of members on both sides of the aisle. So again, I'm very pleased to be on the floor to consider these important bills. I look forward to working through this process with all of my colleagues. Um, I think the leader has made clear that he wants to complete action on this package expeditiously. So I would ask uh, colleagues to, to review the bills that we have in front of us, not just the interior bill, but uh, the, the, the full package as well. Um, get on it. Get us your, your amendments. The quicker we can process amendments, the quicker we can clear them on both sides and arrange for, for votes um, that, that uh, they may require.